All right, I'm finally gonna do it. I am going to skin the simulator. And by skin, I of course mean put skin on instead of taking it off. This all happened about a year ago when I realized that the simulator has a grand, awesome skeleton, but you can stick your hand through it. My first material I worked with was this fiberglass stuff. This is really a method I've described in previous videos, so if you want to see those, go check out the link in the description below. Hi, YouTube! Hello! Bye, YouTube! Love you! Mwah! Subscribe to- I just drilled some 1 8 inch holes for my 1 8 inch Clicos, and they fit fantastically. This is what I wanted to have, because you can- put in the Clicos temporarily, and then have them actually hold up. This is basically a temporary screw, uh, so it won't strip out the wood as unscrewing and screwing does. So yeah, that's something super fun. It's not necessary, and I know that, I, I know, but I really like Clicos now. We have a little bit of lip right here. So I have a flush trim router bit. It has a bearing right here and it goes against the bearing and cuts everything that doesn't touch the bearing. So it cuts any excess from here. I think this is how they make confetti. This is such a fun job. What I have here is an oscillating saw, oscillating, oscillating saw, and it has a very thin blade, so you can really kind of take the extra stuff out of here. So I'm gonna try to use this and see what result I get. Before I go to Lowe's, I do want to see. If I need one more thing, uh, some plywood for this. I know I've gone back and forth with plywood sheet metal, uh, and this fiberglass stuff that I kind of hate. Uh, so we're going to try plywood, because I've never actually tried it. I've only done small tests, and we're going to see how that goes. Many of you have voiced your concerns about plywood, uh, and said that it cracks too much, basically, doesn't bend well, and that it just doesn't work well in general. I have a sheet of 30 inch by 30 inch one quarter inch plywood. We're gonna see if it bends. If it works, I might go with it. If it doesn't work, I probably won't. So I'm gonna cut it into probably one and a half inch strips, and we're gonna go from there. It fits this contour pretty well, uh, I have to say. So that's great, but does it hit the worst contour ever? kind of does. There's a lot of twisting and bending required with it, uh, so this is going to take a lot of glue. So I have my pieces right here. Some of them are three inches long for the pieces that don't really need to be super flexible. Uh, and then the other ones are 1.5 inches. Okay, here's the idea. Uh, you'll get a bunch of pieces like this and kind of form them around this profile. My big concern with this is that I want to have everything modular. I want to be able to take pieces off and fix them. I'm going to use a technique called intentional idiocracy. Uh, it's a technique I just invented, but basically what you do is you use your nail gun, hook it up to your power, uh, to your air, and nail gun. My technique is to use less than the amount of required pressure for the nail gun, uh, and then you would ideally put the nail in only halfway through, but because the nail gun requires a certain amount of pressure to actually separate these nails, uh, my technique doesn't actually work. So, uh, yeah. I'm gonna play around a little more and see what the minimum pressure is needed for a nail to break off the chain and then 
we'll go th through there. So 60 is about the limit, that's interesting. My idea is that I basically nail gun it at the lowest usable pressure, so in my case it's like 65-ish, and then I hook up the air, and then nail brad this in place where it would go. It's all in place right here, and when I'm done with everything and it's all in place, I'll actually glue it in place so it's all one big piece of wood and smash it with a hammer. Well, not really, but the idea is that I would kind of bonk it off. When I bonk it off, this staple right here would actually stay, so you would just remove that or you could actually also clip it down, but that would put shards of metal in your wood. Here's about what it looks like. Uh, definitely isn't perfect, but I think it works pretty well. This of course doesn't stand the test of time, as it's been on my simulator probably 10 minutes, but I like how it looks. It kind of reminds me of boat construction, how they use a bunch of small pieces like this uh, to kind of fit it together. Learning a lot about how plywood works and enjoying every minute of it. Well, most of the minutes. Ow! A splinter! Now I'm kind of going to paint the wood glue onto these seams right here. See how that works? Uh, now that I think about it, it's a lot better to do it another way. Just as you go, but it's too late to do that, so I'm gonna try to kind of do this. This doesn't work at all, actually. So yeah, goodbye. <laughs> Good catch. So, this weird fiberglassy stuff that makes my arm itch is pretty cool, but there's another method I want to try out. Aluminum! And no, I'm not going to use a bunch of soda cans, though that would be hilarious. Aluminum is pretty funky. It's... You can get it super thin and have it really strong. It can bend easily, and it can also be deformed easily. You'll see this right here. On an aluminum can, this can was actually formed into a press with a bunch of funky things, uh, and it can expand and kind of contract, so it's a really cool material to work with. I can make compound curves like this if I expand places or shrink other places, so it'll be a fun material to work with, assuming I figure it out. You can actually stand on an aluminum can without it crushing. Right here we have some aluminum flashing. This is pretty thin aluminum that's often used in roofing. It looks like it's 66020, if that means anything. Today we're going to use it on a simulator. I have some tin snips, but I hope they work on aluminum too. Oh. Right here is a hammer and dolly set. So these hammers, the idea is that you actually just hammer the aluminum into the right shape. I haven't ver really practiced, and I don't know if I'm doing it right, so, uh, power to ya. And I think you would just sand it smooth and just work your way with smaller hits. The idea with this is that you have this dolly and you put it underneath the metal. And start to form it. <laughs> it's kind of working. Uh, not very, not as much as I would have thought, but yeah. Apparently, one tip is if you hold 
it with your finger like this, you can take smaller hits and more of them more precisely. Uh, so I'll try to do that. too thin. So the bending test didn't go so well, <laughs> uh, or at least I haven't worked with it enough to have it go well. Uh, we'll try cutting it with this utility knife just to see if it does. And it looks like it doesn't, so that's kind of stupid. Oh, you can get it to split though. Technically, cut it with a utility knife. You just have to bend it off and break it. Uh, so it's actually more of a scribing line than anything. Let's try just normal scissors. Wow, that cuts off very nicely. I'm so glad I tried though, because I've learned a lot through just walking through this process. I've learned a lot about aluminum, I might have some more tricks up my sleeve once we unshelf this. So for now I just have cool ninja stars. So we have our three materials that we can use. Three methods. There's the fiberglass, the wood, and the metal. All three of these work. I don't really think it's fair to say that one doesn't work or one of them is terrible. I feel like they're all pretty good and they're all about the same amount of effort. I don't really like the fiberglass. It's itchy and stuff and I don't really like it. But the wood, I think I would use in future projects, potentially. Metal, I'm actually going with, and I'm already preparing the next video about how I'm actually going to do it. I think this is really cool how it all works, and it's going to be exciting to do. I'd really like to say a thank you to the Patreon supporter, David. He really suggested this technique and kind of put it into my mind and, like, really got it going. He gave so much advice. And wisdom with it. I'd like to thank him as well as Similar, Chris P, and David L. Thank you so much for helping fund this channel and help development. That is the Cessna 172 progress report, and I will get back to you very, very soon with this. Have a fantabulous day, and I will see you in the next video. Have a good one.